Hello, and congratulations with your purchase of the Aver Auto Tracking Camera. In today's video, we will take a deeper dive and discuss configuration of the TR530 and the TR320 Auto Tracking Cameras. In today's video, we will be discussing uh, 10 different topics. The first one noted here is uh, setting up the camera to either be DHCP or static IP addressing putting it on your network. This is uh, essential in the sense that you need to connect it to a network for the configuration of your auto tracking or the uh, stage and segment modes. Uh, choosing the right browser for logging into the camera, controlling navigating the camera in the web UI, saving recalling presets and profiles, configuring the tracking in wide mode and segment, turning on off the tracking via the web UI or the camera remote, Factory reset using the camera remote in case the password is forgotten or changed and you're not able to log in via the web UI. And then also powering on off the camera with, with the camera remote. And then also Aver has a new PTZ management software and we'll cover that as well. So real quick, the TR530 camera offers 30X optical zoom and three unique tracking modes wide area, stage, and segment, you will notice the camera has two lenses, the main PTZ lens and the bottom uh, panoramic lens for that 120 degree field of view. I always describe this as uh, the, <clears throat> the cameras have two purposes. So it's a dual function, right? So the first is obviously to capture an image, but also it's being used to capture information for the tracking algorithm. The PTZ lens is used to, uh, for face detect, and it is used primarily for depth tracking, which I'll show later on in the video. So as the presenter or teacher walks towards the camera, the PTZ lens will actually tilt down. So that is used with face detect. And then the bottom lens down here is used to capture not only an image, but also uh, it's, it's using that information for its uh, motion tracking algorithm. So as you move about the room, uh, it picks up the motion and then moves the camera. The TR320 camera, you'll notice looks very much the same. The bezel is a bit different. It's gray in color. This one has 22 optical zoom or 22X optical zoom, and also this camera currently only offers one tracking mode, which is the wide area tracking. So here I'm showing a side-by-side -side comparison of the TR530 and the TR320 cameras. There are two differences. Uh, the optical zoom, as mentioned before, 30X and 22X, and then the tracking modes. The 530 offers the three tracking modes, the 320 only the wide area. While shooting this video, there has been some discussions as to updating the firmware so that the TR320 also offers stage and segment tracking. Uh, so that's a work in progress that, and that could change in the near future. So quickly, just a quick look on the front of the camera main PTZ lens, panoramic. The RJ45 connection here is for network connectivity. Uh, this camera does not support PoE+. Plus. Some of our other cameras do support PoE+. Plus. This camera does not. The same is true for the TR320. This camera does offer two SDI outputs and an HDMI output. These outputs are simultaneous, meaning you will get video simultaneously at the same time. It does support an audio line in should your installation require audio in from the camera. There are other options being used out there, especially in K-12 environment. You can just hook up your audio, uh, either wireless mic or a wired mic right to your technology PC that's at the teacher's desk but we do have the ability to take in a three and a half millimeter uh, line level in. RS-232 control and then 12 volts DC at five amps. 
a couple uh, options for installing the camera. We do offer this uh, camera mount that's used for the wall or ceiling. And then also this one here is an L-type for the wall. Keep in mind the TR530 and the TR320 has to be installed vertically as seen here. The camera cannot be installed inverted. Some of our other cameras you can invert. This camera you cannot. So in this slide I'm showing uh, what a potential configuration could look like. Again, as mentioned, this camera can be ceiling hung but not inverted. So we do offer a ceiling mount here and then the camera would sit in here. Another option would be to have it on a tripod at the rear of the room and then the connections would be a, a three cable connection, one being power, a long HDMI or long SDI cable from the camera to a converter, either SDI to USB converter or HDMI to USB converter and then plugging into your technology and then from here you would run uh, Zoom or your Google Meet, Teams, whatever your platform is for your long distance learning or distance learning. Also, <clears throat> you would need to run, and this could be a temporary type setup. Uh, this connection is really only needed for the configuration of the camera. So a, a network connection to a, a switch, gigabit switch, and then hardwired connection from your technology to the gigabit switch. Again, the teacher not, does not necessarily need to have this connected 100% of the time. If you're going around the rooms, say you're on the, uh, the IT team, you could connect this up to your local, you know, your, your, your tech laptop, right? Configure the camera and then you can recall your profiles and presets all from the camera remote. And then this, this portion here could be then removed. Um, so this dotted line just kind of shows what's near the teacher's desk or the podium or the what have you, just to kind of give you an idea of, of the cable links and runs. So as mentioned, for, for audio, you can use the AC4, MXL AC404 that kind of just plugs in and that has a pretty good distance, you know, 20 feet or so. And then it, there's an Audio Technica, more of a permanent installation that's ceiling hung. And that's like omnidirectional and a 25 foot range. But we'll go over this here shortly. All right, so you get the camera, you pull it out of the box. What does it look like? So. So the, the default IP address is 192.168.1.1. We understand that you know your your network environment's gonna be gonna vary, right? So there's a couple ways to configure the camera out of the box. One is is using the on-screen display from the camera. So directly from the camera, let me fade over here. Once you hook it up, this is the HDMI output going through a BU110. HDMI to USB converter into my technology. So that's what I'm seeing right here. You can select camera one here from the camera remote once you put in the batteries. The camera remote requires two AAA batteries. Select camera one and then there's a blue button in the middle that says menu. And you should see that menu come up here. So for, for setting up, a, this, in this case, we're setting up a static IP address. Um, so we'd come down here to where it says DHCP. We will make sure this is set to off. Hit enter and then return. One nine, yeah, we can use the numbers from the remote, so I'll go 192.168. So one one six eight dot zero dot 
two, two, one. So this is the static IP address that I want to enter into the camera so that I can talk to it from my laptop. Next, you could set up a gateway if you know it. This is only needed if, if you're going to stream direct from the camera out to the internet. Uh, you can leave this blank. But the subnet mask is important in the sense um, that it matches your network. So in my case, it's 255.255.0. And actually, I am going to change this to 192.168.0. Dot one, which is a pretty common thing here. But again, in your situation, you may not need to do that. So once I'm satisfied with that, I just want to do one quick check. Is come down here in information and verify the IP address is set to 192.168.0.221. And then hit the middle, the uh, menu button, the blue button, to exit out. So, once we've changed that uh, static IP to match my computer subnet, uh, we can enter that IP address in, in a Chrome browser to gain access to the TR530 or 320 web UI. So let me call up this here and I just set that up to be 192.168.221 now when you first log in it will ask you for a password defaults admin and then here is the landing page I'll just make that a little bit okay the recommended browser for accessing our cameras is Chrome IE 11 is also supported and also later versions of Firefox. Uh, Edge is not supported as well as Safari is not supported. Uh, so if you're using a Mac, uh, then the recommendation is to install Chrome for Mac. And this is how you gain access to the camera for configuration of the tracking settings. So you have wide, stage, and segment. There is also another way to, to do this. So say you don't have an HDMI monitor handy, you can do it via software. So we have this static, um, I mean, this Aver IP camera utility. You can access it via this web link. Let me show you on the web browser. Once I pull it up here, it will bring you to this page, this download center. You can do a search on your camera, auto tracking camera. This 500S, we're going to look for software, firmware, search, Crestron control. Might be under software. Ah, so here it is IP search utility for the camera. And then select download, and you can install this. It's a really useful tool. You know, unzip it and then install it. But what it does, let me start it from fresh here. So once you open it up, you do a search. And it's scanning the network for the cameras. And you'll notice it sees the tracking camera. You would select it. You could also adjust it to be either DHCP or static from here. It has the uh, IP address that we had previously. But let's just say we're going to change it to 1. And I want to say, and then make sure you have user ID admin, password admin. Say apply. Right here in the progress bar, it's showing you some information that it's actually changing the IP address of that camera. Scans the network. 
and now here it's actually changed to some other IP address. So this tool is very flexible, very easy to use. I actually want to change this back because uh, that address is not, there's, there's another device on my network with that IP address. And once I selected it, make sure this is selected. I say apply, shows you progress. Scans the network. And then we're back in business with our proper IP address that we want. Okay, so DHCP, same idea here. Um, so if you are actually connected to your the school network and there's a DHCP server, you would just connect uh, the HDMI output. Again, this is using the uh, on-screen display. The only difference here is you would just select DHCP on. Uh, I, I don't have a DHCP, I, I have the DHCP server disabled in my setup. But the example here, if you were to come here, DHCP, you would just select this to be on. Once it's on, it's actually going out asking the DHCP server, can I have an IP address? The server says OK, assigns it. And then to verify what that uh, reserved IP is, you would come down here to information. And in information, it will show you the IP address that was given or reserved for the camera. So that's the important step there. And then you would type or note that IP address. You hit M to exit. And then you would just type in whichever IP address was uh, reserved for your for that particular camera. In my case, since I'm one, let's pretend it was 221, then it will ask you for the admin. Okay, same idea with the uh, IP configurator. If you didn't have an HDMI monitor handy or the video is not connected, you would then just run the IP camera utility. It will come up with its default. You can then change it to DHCP. So I'll show you that here in a second. So if I come here, run this, do a search, the TR530 camera will have its default IP address. I would select it. I could change it here to be DHCP, say apply. It says invalid ID password. That's because I did not put in admin admin. Once you put in admin, admin, say apply, it will change it to DHCP, do a search again, and it will show you the IP address given. Once you get that, then you would just type in the IP address in your web browser in Chrome. Okay, so Let's get on with the tracking. So the TR530 offers three distinct tracking modes, wide area, stage, and segment. The TR320 only has wide area tracking. But as mentioned before, we are discussing to add stage and segment to the TR320, potentially in the next 
couple months. So what are these tracking modes? So wide area tracking is when you're in a well-lit area. Uh, the camera is not that far from the teacher, so 25, 30 feet away. Um, and it gives you the ability to, to, to not only track left, right, but also depth, as I mentioned before. Stage the cameras further away, you know, small auditorium. Uh, it's potentially 50, 60, 70 feet away. And then your target or the presenter, uh, the face is, uh, you know, it's, it's harder to get that face detail for face detect. So, so then this is purely based on motion but it will track you fine. You know, perhaps the lighting's a little bit low in this situation. And then segment, where content's more important. So you want to create these presets. So we have up to four zones, anywhere from two to three to four different zones, presets. And you can create these presets to have different uh, PTZ values, right? So you could have a good morning shot, uh, go to a learning station, have it zoom in tighter, and then as I walk to another part of the room, it will zoom out and capture, say, an interactive flat panel, an IFP, or a whiteboard. And uh, I do not have to be center to the image, but uh, just anywhere within that preset. So rule of thumb here for the uh, tracking and the object viewing dimension. Uh, technically, it's 144 pixels by 144 pixels, but really, it's uh, you want the head to be anywhere between one quarter to one fifth of the frame. That's a little bit more about stage, and I'll just go ahead and, and go straight into the live demo. So let me go into here. So again, we Typed in the IP address in Chrome, this is where we land. We're going to tracking, setting. We select object viewing dimension. And this is where we um, are going to line up the crosshairs. Again, keeping this one quarter to one fifth of this frame. Once you use these controls to pan, tilt to where you want to go, to set that up, you just kind of bring it in over here. Okay, looks good. Select Save. Priority Zone. This uh, blue box, I will skip this. Select Go. This blue box is the area that you're defining that you want the camera to start to track. So as I enter this blue box, the camera will say, okay, I am going to start to look for someone. So this blue box, for me, it makes sense like this because this is where I am 80-85% uh, of the time. You could potentially have it a wider box, right? So as the teacher walks into the room, enters this blue box, it will wake up the camera to say, okay, look for someone to start the track. But for me, I kind of keep it over here and then select Save. Again, this blue box is not defining the area I can walk in. I can walk in anywhere in this 120 degree view you see and even outside of it. This is just giving the camera a sense of where to start tracking. Shielded zone, we have up to eight grids or eight masks. And the idea here is to shield out any motion that could be in the background. So for instance, say there is a uh, projector here that's projecting an image with motion you may want to black that out block it out so that motion doesn't cause any interference with me walking around or maybe there's a window here with students walking outside of the uh, of the classroom you can block that out as well or there's some students here in the front row or in my case, these cameras. What if these cameras were moving about? Uh, I can mask that out as well. Oops, let me, let me make that a little more here. I could mask that out. But in a classroom environment, this would be like a table with students sitting in it. So, okay, say save here. 
So all this information is saved in the camera. If you unplug it over the weekend, plug it in on Monday morning, all that information is still there. And then uh, depth tracking. This allows the camera to actually point down as I walk towards the camera. Uh, so you can enable disable. I'll show you a quick view of how this looks. So I enable depth tracking. I was in wide mode. I will enable the tracking here. Enable tracking. Enable tracking. I can also enable tracking from the uh, camera remote. Let me pick this guy, fade over. Okay. So you should have a, a view of the picture in picture as well from the TR530 camera. That is configurable. There's up to eight different options for picture in picture. Uh, I find it useful here. But as I walk towards the camera, you will notice the camera will dip down or tilt down. And then the motion is picking me up. So if per, like an example is what if my back is turned, you don't see my face anymore. Does the camera still track me? Yes, it does because it's still tracking my motion. Right. Or maybe I'm sliding a whiteboard over and then looking back at the students that sort of thing. So that's wide area. There is also auto zoom. What that does is it keeps the framing as I walk towards the camera. It'll zoom out. If I walk away from the camera, it'll zoom in. And the multi-presenter, should you have, uh, if someone else should walk up, uh, who does the camera track? So in multi-presenter mode, it detects that second person. And we'll just enable that here. And there's settings for that. But the idea here is that, I'll skip this, go. This orange box is for multi-presenter. So what I'm saying is if another person should walk into this area, the camera will go into multi-presenter mode. It will snap to preset number two and sit and hold there until that second person walks out of frame. Once the camera detects only one person in the frame, then it will go back to uh, single presenter mode as noted here. So you have adjustments for that as well. So there are some important presets. Preset one is sort of like your starting position, uh, the teacher's desk, that sort of thing very much very close to what the blue crosshairs that we discussed and then preset number two is used for multi-presenter so you have this option as well for multi-presenter stage again i can't demo it but it's when the camera's further back small auditorium medium sized auditorium cameras 50 60 70 feet away um, you would use stage and then segment I can demo where the content's more important. Here, the crosshairs is the same that we defined in wide area, so nothing to change there. I'll close that out. Uh, the effective zone. So this is where we want to uh, divvy up the room into into different segments. Right. So I'll reset this. So this is a, another blue box. So I'm, I'm giving the camera information as far as what does my space look like. So that's roughly what my space looks like. Uh, I have my room is 13 feet wide. And I'm roughly 10 feet away from the camera to give you an idea. But you would just draw this big blue box, say next. And then how do I want to divide this up? Uh, two, three, or four different blocks. In my case, I'm going to say three looks good so it divided it in three but I noticed and this is important my elbow see my elbow going into that transition space between preset six and seven that could potentially trigger the camera to go into that other preset um, I don't I want to make this a little bit wider so you just grab this edge and make it a little bit wider and then preset seven I want to bring this in a little bit tighter like that so my elbow is is not accidentally causing the camera to go to preset number seven. 
All right, that looks good. I want to bring this in a little bit tighter here. You will notice sometimes it's a little difficult to grab the edge, but it does work. And I'll go to preset eight and then bring this over. Looks good. You do need a transition between these presets because that gives the camera information as to when one preset starts and when one ends. Okay, looks good. Say next. So preset number eight is highlighted. What do I want that to look like? So in this example, let's say it's um, Art Appreciation Week and I want to zoom out a little bit more. Maybe want to talk about a project on leadership over here. So that looks good. I'm going to save that preset. I'll go to number seven. Uh, as I walk about your, your classroom, maybe you want to zoom in on this information, on this content. We're talking about learning colors in English and Spanish. And I'm going to say save preset. And then number six. This could be my good morning shot. Uh, maybe zoom in a little bit more. Perhaps there's a whiteboard back here. You know, good morning, students. These are the things we're going to discuss. Uh, maybe zoom out a little. I, I didn't like that. Maybe zoom out a little more to capture more of the whiteboard. So once you're satisfied, just select Save Preset. So you now have selected or saved Preset 6, Preset 7, and Preset 8. Looks good to me. And maybe tilt down a little bit. Yeah, okay, looks good. Once satisfied, just hit finish, finish and you're good. Uh, effective zone, we just did. Shielded zone, same idea. I'll skip this, go. If there's something potentially in the background that's, um, you know, maybe there's a fan moving back and forth, a window, a projector, right? Then you can mask it out. Select save. And then the last step here, tracking body, skip, go. This is to give the camera an idea of what a human looks like. So you want to grab the head uh, within the shoulders, torso, that main bulk of the body, if you will, and then save. And we're good. There is a motion sensitivity. So so maybe it, the lights are a little low and it's, it's not picking up enough, you can crank up the sensitivity, or maybe it's picking up too much motion so you can bring it down a bit. So we are now in segment mode, and just to show you here, I will enable tracking, and show this here, let's fade this over. So now I'm in segment tracking. Um, one thing you can't see, I switched, I turned on the camera tracking in segment mode, but on the front of the camera, there is a, a blue LED and it's currently blinking every two seconds. That's a visual to know that the camera is actually in tracking mode. When tracking is disabled, you can do that either the web UI or the remote. There's a button here for tracking, then it will just be a solid blue LED. Currently, I'm in uh, segment mode my good morning student shot as I walk transition to another space of the room I want to focus more in on the colors in English and Spanish right so we want to talk about something a little more on focus on the content as I walk over here to another part of the room I can then discuss uh, art appreciation uh, or project on leadership we're going to be that's coming up right in a couple weeks I need you to focus on that what's coming up so notice it doesn't matter where I am in the frame, it's gonna stay in this preset. I mean, yeah, it's not gonna move. It's not trying to keep me centered like in wide mode. Right, so I can be anywhere in here. Now remember I transition space here, then it kicks over, right? We're gonna talk about some colors. And then as I transition back here, and then back to your good morning shot or what have you. So that's segment.
Presets, as I mentioned, are very important. So preset one, if the tracking gets lost for any reason, it will go back to preset number one. Preset number two is for multi-presenter. Preset six, seven, eight, and nine, these are reserved for your segment tracking that we just discussed. Um, also, we have up to 256 different presets, so more than enough than, uh, than you will ever need. But you also you have access to all of them via the web UI and the first 10 via the camera remote. So we'll just go back here. So, and the way to save it, you would just uh, you know position the camera to where you want to you want that preset to look. Type in the number, and then press set, and that's it. That's preset number one. Here's number six, number two, number six. My good morning shot. Number one, one and six are pretty much the same. So no change there. Home position is really all zeros. So zero pan, zero tilt, zero zoom. But you can also change your home preset to be something else on this camera. So I'll come here. Profiles are important. So this is where I mentioned early in the video where um, once the camera's configured with, with the settings, you can save all that information, presets, tracking settings to a profile. And then once you save those profiles, you can call them up via the camera remote. So it's a very useful, uh, it's very useful to have that network connection first, save those profiles, and then you would have the ability to actually call up those profiles from the remote once it's configured. So in this case, I have, you have up to five different profiles. Let me just show you the tracking setting I'm in. So I'm currently in segment and tracking is disabled. But notice my profile number one that I saved. Um, I have it wide tracking on. And the way I save that is pretty straightforward. I went to wide area. I enabled tracking. Went to profile. Gave it a name wide tracking on chose the profile I want to save it to in this case number one and then select save and now anytime I call up this profile it's going to call up that tracking setting or mode with it on as well as any other of your settings motion sensitivity auto zoom etc so to show that I'll just put it here in segment Tracking is disabled. I will fade this over. So I'm not using the web UI now. I'm just calling up the profile number one. So I'll go profile number one. And it's calling up that profile. So right now we should be in wide area and tracking enabled. So wide area again means it's just going to follow me around, keeping me centered to the frame of the video frame. Okay, and then I'll fade back to the GUI web UI here and then notice tracking, I'm in wide tracking enabled. So really useful to have these profiles. Likewise, I have this other one called up segment tracking on. It will recall all those values that we worked on right the size of the presets and, and everything will be recalled so pretty pretty useful there and then just kind of wrapping this up there's um, this is where you can uh, change the camera password this is where you would check your current version of firmware and where you would upgrade as well so if you were to get the latest uh, bin file, you would select upgrade, choose that file, upload it, and let it, let it do its upgrade process. Camera also supports Wake on LAN. If, there is, uh, if you have a third-party Wake on LAN software, 
uh, and you wanted to use it to wake up the camera, uh, then you could click here to enable that feature. Another useful feature is import export setting. If you wanted to say you had multiple rooms and they're all basically the same, all the settings we just worked on, you could export. You could export it to this file and then go to the next room, import it, and it would have all those tracking settings and presets that you had. And then maybe that would be very useful to get you, say, 85, 90% of the way there, and then uh, just continue on working. And then factory default puts everything back to factory default with the um, password to admin and allows you access here. But let's say somebody did change it and you weren't, you didn't have access to the camera via the web UI. There is another way to do that. So if I fade here, you'll notice you would have to connect an HDMI output to the camera, or in this case, I'm using a, it's going through a converter. I will actually disable tracking still enabled, so I'm gonna disable tracking from the camera remote. I'm just gonna pan over a little bit and then pan down a little bit. But on the uh, camera remote, if you hit menu, you go down to, I think it's factory default. So this is where you would select, do you want to go to factory default, yes or no? And if you did, you would come here, select yes, and it would reset the password to the camera. I press menu key to exit out of there. So to kind of wrap this up, I will talk about the PTZ management software. So if I come here, after installing it, it's an exe file, PTZ management. So the Aver PTZ management software allows up to 100 and diff 128 different cameras to be accessed at one instance, and also up to 100 users. We can create admin users and then, or different types of credentials, right, as admin or user. So in this case, I'm an admin. I type in my credentials, and then this is what it looks like when you first log in. It's actually going out looking on the network to see what cameras are available. I might have this camera entered twice. That's why you don't see it. But you can actually have this single view and go to the next camera here, and then you would have control of that camera. So say this is room 310, you could give a quick visual of what's going on in that room. You could call up presets and also enable tracking from this uh, management software as well. So this is single view, this is quad view, and uh, you, have, you have this 16 view, right? Up to 16 cameras at one time. So pretty useful to have. So check status of your cameras at a glance. If I go to setup, this is where you would add your cameras, right, with proper IP info and whatnot. So I have admin rights. I can add, delete cameras. I can edit them. Same with the users. I can add, delete uh, this rich user only has user rights, so would not have access to add, delete, or edit. Same with here, if I logged in as rich user, I would not have the ability to edit or add or delete. But this is what the um, admin rights have. System shows you the version. Right now we're in beta version eight. Management at a glance shows you what version of software, sorry, what version of firmware is uh, being used on the cameras. I actually entered this one twice. One thing I notice currently is that I, I cannot edit the IP information. Um, so, so like our other software, the IP, 
IP cam utility. So like our other IP cam utility software, you cannot uh, actually change the um, IP information. It would have to be changed by the IP cam utility and then you would have to update this uh, kind of manually. So for instance, uh, if I go here to set up device setup here and I said edit from here I could not change the IP address this is more of I need to know what the IP address is so this links to that camera hopefully that makes sense so this is it in a nutshell, but it's a useful tool because you could also um, push out, say, a firmware update from here as well. I haven't tried that yet, but but you could go to that, uh, say, if I clicked uh, device, device here, go to web, it would actually take me it knew my login information and then here I am. So it gives you, so instead of actually loading or opening Chrome and typing in the IP address, it'll actually get you here from uh, PTZ management. And you can check some quick, some things quickly and then just exit out. Same with uh, this guy here. If I said go to web, it actually brings me to the uh, login page or the landing page of that camera. So this concludes the uh, deeper dive into setting up the camera over the network, setting it up DHCP versus static, how to actually set up the wide and segment modes of the TR530 and TR320 the same process. We talked about presets and profiles, um, how to turn on off the tracking via the web UI and the camera remote, as well as setting up presets, setting up profiles, and then more importantly, how to recall those profiles from the camera remote. It's as simple as selecting profile number one, and it recalls that profile that we had saved uh, via the web UI connected on the network. So thank you and good luck.